He's feisty. Don't lose him. Counting on you. Get him in the gun. Yeah. 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 We accomplished our goal. So what you want to do is you want to come in here, inch, inch and a half. Just try to stay consistent and cut through that backbone. Three more minutes. I think like eight minutes on this. Eight yeah, minutes eight minutes side. per side is what it looks and like. And then I'm going to flip it. That's what we're going to do. I agree. Hey guys, my name is Emily. Oops, I'm going too fast. My name is Amanda. Welcome to our channel, Gale Force Twins. We are in a no wake zone going out of the Hillsboro Inlet. But there is also a lot of current. So guys, fun fact is, obviously you want to make sure you have control of your boat, but you still want to respect the no wake zone. So there's this fine line of making sure, you know, you don't, you don't crash. Don't crash yeah. <laughs> to do a Hillsboro Inlet kingfishing video. The way we catch kingfish is by planer fishing. Now, if you're really, really interested in the nitty gritty details of how to planer fish, we have a video on that, which we will link for you in the description box. However, we are gonna go out, we're gonna catch a kingfish for you all. Wow, see the sport fish going by. All right, you ready to go fast? You ready? We're going fast. Let's go. Time to get on play. Yay! The hooks we are using today, they have Mona wire on them to keep my Bonita strip in place and a swivel on top of it. Now you can use 90 Mustad J hooks. You can use a long shank owner hook. There's a lot of options. These hooks actually come pre-rigged. We buy them from real, buy them from real deal bait and tackle in Pompano. So it just makes it simple and easy, but you can also rig them. We have done it both ways. You know, the charter crowd definitely likes to rig their own because it's cheaper. <laughs> but if you're in a pinch, just go buy them ready to go. The first thing I like to do is poke a hole in the top of my Bonita strip with my hook, just like that. Then I take that hole and I put it through the wire. I'm gonna go ahead and bend this wire back and down, just like that. See that? Mm -hmm. Okay, then I'm gonna measure where the Bonita strip will sit on the hook. Keep my fingers there. And that's where I'm gonna poke the hole in the middle of the strip. And you can do this with mullet strips. You do this with mullet strips and slide it on. So that's what you want it to look like. And after our hook setup, I have a blue boon squid, followed by a blue and white um, sea witch. And this sea witch has a quarter ounce head. From the lure, I have 15 feet of 60 pound floral leader, followed by another 100 feet of 60 pound mono wind-on leader. And that mono wind-on is a shock leader, essentially. It's a shock leader, yes. It's so, the stretchiness, the absorbance for when that fish, exactly, especially and if it's a big who. Exactly. I just let out my 60 pound floral leader, followed by my 60 pound mono wind-on shock leader, and now I'm at my bridle. So my bridle has, I use scro swivels on either end, um, and this is like a 200 pound braid, and all we're gonna do is slide our planer on with these double-sided swivels. So this one is closed and this one is cut actually. And a trick with the planer is that you wanna have the weight always facing you. Just remember that, because if not, it will not set. It and then not set. on my reel, I have 80 pound braid. With a bimini, of course. We always tie biminis. Yes, we do. So and all I, the details of all these knots, again, are in I'll our how to planer fish video. And in the description box. So, so so, so I'm setting my planer out. I'm gonna go out for about 30 seconds because this is gonna be my long planer. I'm using a number four planer. Again, all these details in the description box and in our how to planer fish video. Um, do you think that's been 30 seconds? No, no. Okay, so we're gonna keep letting it out. And my number four planer usually likes to set automatically. So if I put this in the rod holder, it might set already. I'm gonna put it in the rod holder, put it up to strike. Okay, so it's not set. So to set it, Grab the line and drop it. Now it's set. 
That was you look really like you know what you're doing. smooth. Okay, so now I'm gonna set up the second one, which I'm gonna use a number eight planer and make it my short. I'm gonna let it out for around 20 seconds, and then we're gonna wait for a bite. If you're specifically targeting kingfish, my recommended water depth would be 100 feet. I would start in 100 feet, and I would make zigzags offshore and near shore. So I'd go offshore to about 150, then I'd make not a sharp turn, but more of like a soft turn, a curve, back in all the way into maybe 75 feet of water. Now you have to be careful because if you use large planers, you can hit bottom. So you gotta be mindful of what size planer you're using. I personally would definitely not go in any shallower than 50 feet. I like to stay, stay safe and do 75 feet. So we're just gonna be making these S's up the coast of Florida or down the coast of Florida. Another thing to look for is wrecks. Kingfish like structure. They like to live on a home. So if you have a wreck, even if it's a public wreck that's in your garment or your GPS, go for it. Go over it, five knots, pulling planers in between 75 feet and 150 feet. So we've been trolling for mm, 45 minutes. 45 minutes. No bites. With no bites in our area. We were trolling near the stink hole for those of you that are familiar with Hillsborough Inlet. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna pick up and we're actually gonna run to a wreck called the Hydro, which is only like five miles north of here and we're gonna give it another try. Yes, so let's show them how we trip our- yes. I will show you on my long. When you're tripping a planer. All right, we're gonna pick this up. Let me step back so I get the whole shot. All right. Yeah. I'm gonna pull the rod tip up high, drop it, let there be slack in the rod, and then I'm gonna pop it back up straight. But it's gotta be fast. So I'm gonna pull it up nice and slow, Drop it and pop it. And you're See slack. Now, don't drop it too quickly because then it'll reset. Right, so I like to kind of reel on it before sticking in the rod holder and reeling the rest of it in. And I know I feel like we're breezing through this like planer fishing section, just so you're like, you know, the whole rig and all that. So we do have a whole video on this with details because I know we're going really fast. <laughs> and even if we weren't picking up and running, after about this much time of trolling, it's a good time to check your baits. Make sure they're still there. Make sure you put them on right. <laughs> yeah, make sure everything, make sure you're not twist it up if it's been 45 minutes and nothing's happened i would right. start asking some questions right like okay it's not working here let's try a different area let's go to a wreck let's try a different water depth let's check our baits let's make sure we're not tangled and it happened so we actually had a bite that's why our strip looks really sad if you see right here i know it's tough to see but there's a little slice in it and you can see the tooth marks down the side so we had something try to eat this strip, but it ate this part, so it missed the hook. And obviously we didn't see the bite because, well, the fish didn't get hooked. Um, so that's why it's a good reason to check your baits. I'm gonna go ahead and switch this strip out. We got a baby tuna! We are a baby tuna! Or there's a baby of some sort on this rod. I actually put this out, this is our long. It's way, way out there, but uh, we're gonna leave the planers in the water because I'm pretty sure this is really tiny, so I'm just gonna drag this in. I'm not gonna bother slowing the boat down because we know this is a pretty small fish. We're not too worried about it. And if we slow the boat down, then that just risks us missing our chances on getting bites from the planers. So while we're still driving the boat at 5.3 knots to be exact, if you guys are curious, Amanda's gonna reel in the small fish. I bet you it's a small bonita. What do you think, Amanda? I'm gonna go with small bonita, AKA we call them bullets out here. Yep, we also call them bobos. So uh, calling them bobos. Bring it or in. Or boneheads. Bringing them in. Bringing them in. Here it's goes. Getting close. Here it comes. Let's see what All we right, got. Step to your left. Let's see what step we to got. Your left. Oh, yep. it's a. Let's swing this guy in. We got a bonita. A baby bonita. A baby bonita. We caught a fish. The skunk is off the boat. The skunk is the skunk off. Skunk is off the boat. We got the skunk. Yes. I'm gonna go ahead and release this fish so you hook it. I'm gonna grab the hook. Close on the de-hooker. Turn it upside down. Give it a shake. Give it a shake. He's free. Do we have a fish on? I think we got a fish on. We got a fish on. We got a fish on. Oh, we're doubled. We're doubled. Wait, wait, hold on. All right, all right. Stay tight on it, Amanda. Emily, got both out of gear. <laughs> no, it's in gear. It's in gear. Oh, it's in gear, but barely. All, all right. right, guys. Sorry. Chaos. We doubled. We lost one, but we got one still. Let's bring right. it to the boat. <laughs> oh, gosh, I'm not paying attention. <laughs> I'm trying to talk to you guys. Okay. This is going to be our we? king. I hope it's our king. Our king? I think so. Rio. 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 This is a decent fish. This is a bonita. It's a bonita. No, it's a king. It's a king? You're right. I was right. It's yes. a king. 
Do we gotta get yeah. this one? Heck yeah. Um, well, or well, swing it, you can swing, I can it. swing it. He's feisty. Don't lose him. Counting on you. Get him in the room. Yeah. 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 We accomplished our goal. Yes. <laughs> we caught a kingfish. That's what we came here to do. Second fish of the day. As soon as the skunk was off the boat, Mr. Kingfish was Mr. like, Kingfish, I want that. Mr. Slimer. Mr. Slimer. And just so you guys know, um, I know in the beginning of this video, I showed you a blue and white sea witch, but after seeing how green the water was, well, I decided I wanted to put my pink sea witch on. So the water is very green right now. So we like to use colors like pink, green, and white. Ooh, hey, he's feisty. I don't know why I just jumped. I, I, I knew he was there. So when the water's really green, I like to use pink, green, and white sea witches and boon squids. I like those colors a lot. So when I saw the green water, I switched it out. And Mr. Pink did the trick. When you got to think, go pink. And pink's a really good color in the winter time. Let's do this, guys. I'm going to hit mark right now on my Garmin, or man overboard if you have that button. That tells kingfish tend to, if you do find them, yes, they are a migratory species, but if you find them, they tend to stay in the same general area, I would say, for that day. The next day you go out, they might not still be there, or a week later, they might not still be there. But for the most part, kind of, they'll hang out for a little while, wouldn't you say so? Anytime you're catching fish, whether it's a tuna, a mahi, a kingfish, a wahoo. Once you catch one, pay attention to where you are, put mark on your screen, on your GPS, and then once you land that fish, you can go ahead and circle back. And by circling back, you can keep targeting that same area. I'm gonna get this fish on ice. So yes. I'm gonna go ahead and measure our kingfish, aka mackerel, aka king mackerel. They've got a lot of names depending on where you are in the world. We call um, them kingfish. We call them kingfish around here, and they need to be where we are specifically off the east coast of Florida. It's four per person. They updated the limit recently to four per person, 24 inches to the fork. Uh, make sure you double check your regulations because they're always changing them. So as of today, that's the regulations, but you never know. Okay, let's measure you to the fork. So when you're measuring a fish to the fork, you go from the end of the mouth or the face all the way to the fork of the tail. And this thing is 32 inches to the fork. Beautiful. So go Beautiful. ahead, let's grab a picture. Let's look at this fish. Also something unique about kingfish is those sharp teeth. You gotta be really careful of sharp oh, teeth. Oh yeah. And these beautiful, beautiful fish, silver fish, have a lot of slime. They're very slimy, slippery. Slimy, slimy, slippery fish. Yeah. Sharp teeth, but we don't use wire. We think that, you know, you miss some bites if you use wire and we like to take our chances. We would rather get the bite, know where they are, make another round, and try and catch them as opposed to not get the bite at all. Emily, what? Guess what? What? Come here. Guys, we're dragging another bullet. A bullet. What are they called? Bonitas. No, not a bonita. Bobos. A, bu a bullet. Yeah, they're bullet. called bullets. Yeah. What? I have fish brain. We're dragging another bonita. Which we call bullets when they're little. When they're little, we call them bullets. Kind of like how guy, I think we've been dragging them for like 10 minutes, to be honest. Like, not even kidding. <laughs> I looked back and I actually saw him splashing on the surface. Oh, we might have lost him. Yeah, uh, we lost him. He's gone. Him. Never mind. Put this back out. We are going in. Yes, but I just wanted to show you this is what the planer looks like on the bridle. And it goes through the swivel that has the 200 pound braid. Did you, did you catch yes. that? Oh, yeah. Okay, good. Just making sure. sure. Making sure you can see it. We are going to head in. The bite is a little bit slow today, which is pretty normal for this time of year. So we don't want to waste any of your time just watching us catch nothing. <laughs> so we're going to go in. We're going to show you how to steak and gut this kingfish. And we're going to go ahead. We're going to marinate it, give you the recipe, and put it on the grill. First things first, you want to start with a sharp knife. And what I like to do with this kind of sharpness specifically, I like to rest the knife on the table with the blade up and I run the tool across the knife, the sharpener, I'll run it across the knife as opposed to doing it the other way, which you can would be keeping the sharpener stationary and moving the knife. Um, both work. And you do this and a few times. You do this a few times till it's nice and smooth basically, you don't feel like <laughs> kind of thing. Um, and so we're about to stake this kingfish. We are not at our filet table and our um, YouTube channel is political free. We love you no matter what. So um, yeah, that's all I'm gonna say. Um, the first thing I like to do is remove the head and the tail. And I'm gonna remove the head from right behind the fin, right here. I'm literally gonna come straight down. There you go. All right, 
got through it. And when you're staking a kingfish, you definitely want to make sure that. I'm tired. What was I saying? When you're staking your kingfish? Oh, never mind. Okay. Culturally, some people keep the heads and use it for fish soup. We don't. Okay, <laughs> moving on. I'm gonna go ahead and cut the tail off and I'm gonna do the same thing. The next step, we are gonna gut our kingfish. So you can poke your knife right in front of the anal fin right here and just work up the belly. And all we're gonna do is pull the guts out. And something else to point out too is the order that you do this in, you can reverse the order. You don't have to do the head and tail. It's kind of like anything. You get some practice and you do what's comfortable for you. You can you gut, can it, gut first. it first. You can do the head and tail first. It's whatever works for you. I'm gonna rinse it out like so. And then we're gonna cut off the fins. So if you look right here, you see these fins? Oh yeah. That's what I'm gonna be, that's what I'm cutting off. That's what I'm targeting. I just take my knife, slide it right underneath those fins because there's bones in there and we don't want that. Same thing on the other side. I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna come across, cut all that off. Perfect. Look at that. The next part, I'm basically gonna cut off these fins as well. Just slide my knife in here, come across, just try to sa salvage, save, save as much of that meat as possible. Perfect. Just like that. And right here where these fins were, there is still bones. You're not going to cut all that out. Um, and some people don't cut out all of the fins. Some people just gut it and steak it and they cook it. I mean, there's really no right or wrong way, essentially. It's how, how you want how it. How do you want it on your plate? How you want it on your plate. Some people will cut out little tenderloins and there's no bones, um, but we like to remove all the fins, all the guts, head to tail. Now we're gonna steak it. There we go. Just like that. Perfect. That was a perfect steak. So what you want to do is you want to come in here, inch, inch and a half. Just try to stay consistent and cut through that backbone. And let's talk about why we're on the floor. We're on the dock. Right. Because Amanda had no leverage up here. Look at how high this table is. She had no leverage. She was like, you know what? I gotta get down. I just you felt like- do what you gotta do. I felt like I didn't have control of my knife when I was up here. So I said, I'm just gonna come down here where I actually have some leverage. I feel like I have control of my fish and the knife. So these are some nice, kingfish steaks, you guys. This is gonna be perfect for the grill. What some people do is they like to individually take each, you could say nugget out. So you get four nuggets, but we are going to grill the whole thing as a kingfish steak. Kind of like when you eat salmon and you keep the skin on. It's the same concept, but this time it's kingfish. If you look closely, you can see that the bones run vertically. So when you get your steak on the grill and you eat it, you just, that skin's gonna peel away real easily you're just gonna eat on either side of the bones. And those are all of our kingfish steaks. Instead of, what, instead of sirloin, filet mignon, we have kingfish steak, fish steak. All right. Woo. Did I, Emily, you show them that, so we got the bone right here mm -hmm. and some bones run along here. So Vertically. we're gonna steak it. These are the parts we're gonna eat. And it is going to be delicious. It is time to season our kingfish steaks. First, I'm gonna use Montreal steak seasoning. Guys, these are steaks, so season it as if it was a steak, however you want it. Now, I'm gonna season it now, but I'm also gonna be putting it in milk. So before it goes on the grill, I'm gonna add some extra seasoning to it just to make sure that it stays on, but we're gonna double season it. So we're gonna season one side. And this seasoning, the first ingredient is actually salt. So I like to keep that in mind when I season my fish because I don't want to make it salty. So I have to treat this like it's salty. After they are seasoned, we are going to move these steaks into our, we have a glass py Oops. glass Pyrex Tupperware. I and think you need a bigger Tupperware. Um, we'll make it work. No, we'll probably get a bigger one. Let's get a bigger, bigger one. one. Change of plans. 
before I go to the gallon size bag. I did not realize how big these steaks were. Lastly, we are going to put cover these in milk. Amanda, can you hold the bag open? Okay, so there it is. Our kingfish steaks marinating in milk with some light McCormick steak seasoning we're going to put in the fridge for 30 minutes to an hour. Then we're going to head to the grill, finish seasoning our steaks, and cook it. Um, for sides, we are doing asparagus. I just drizzled it lightly in olive oil, and I used our Montreal steak seasoning. So I'm going to start and just put this on the grill. I love asparagus. Asparagus and is so good. People commented last, People have commented on our cooking videos and have said like, no Where's sides? Your sides? Because we've realized we don't do a lot of sides. Um, not for any reason. <laughs> this is like smoky. Smoky. I'm gonna reach in and grab these kingfish. The marinated kingfish. And I'm gonna go ahead. You can see most of the seasoning, a lot of the seasoning did stick, but it I'm did. gonna season a little bit more before putting it on the grill. Adding the extra seasoning. Okay, I think it's time for the grill. What do I you think? I think it's time. Put them on the it. grill. Let's do it. Open it up for me, please. All right. On to the grill. Okie dokie, here we go. It's You sprayed it, right? Yeah, I sprayed it. Okay, make sure you spray the grill. That's very important um, so that your fish doesn't stick. But I'm pretty excited for this. Five minute update. So you can see the outsides are starting to cook, but the insides are clearly still very raw. So I'm gonna leave them like this for maybe three more minutes. I'm thinking like eight minutes on this. Eight yeah, minutes eight aside. minutes per side is what it looks like. And then like. I'm gonna flip it. That's what we're gonna do. I agree. Check it out. Check it out. The kingfish steak is done at nice and grilled. It it's got some grill marks. So looks good. Looks pretty good. What was the final time? Final time was 15 minutes. About we flipped it at about eight minutes. So I would say maybe flip it about seven to eight minutes per side to get a kingfish steak that's about one and a half inches thick. The recipe details will be in that description box for you guys, so you can go check that out if you want to du duplicate this recipe. Watch the skin peel off super it's easily. It's like salmon almost. It's like salmon, exactly. Skin peels right off, Wow. and we can work around all the bones. Basically, so, we're just going to eat the four eat corners. The four, the four quadrants. Four quadrants. The four quadrants. Okay, Look at so. how that flakes. Oh, that's cooked this perfectly. This is cooked perfectly. Wow, we, didn't, we, didn't, we did a great really job. <laughs> See wow. how flaky it is? All right, you ready? Well, I don't have a big enough bite yet. All right. Okay. Cheers. Oh my gosh. That's on point. That's really good. That is really good. This is pretty good. We nailed it again. We nailed it. <laughs> we went with seven minutes aside for a full, I would say this is cooked all the way through, um, but it's not overdone. Agreed. At medium, medium heat. Thanks for watching guys. Make sure you like and subscribe for more. Comment your thoughts in the comment section for us. Hit the subscribe button, hit the like button. Make sure you follow Gail Force Twins, Twins on Facebook, Facebook Instagram, YouTube. YouTube.